explosions and training areas. That can only mean one thing. We are on exercise. Yes, you can see these vehicles pumping blank rounds down range as they participate in some form of, I guess, situational training where they're being able to fire blanks at one another and do some actual engagements. Now, the fun thing about training like this is actually a lot of involvement, whether it be setting up the vehicles or yourself to play laser tag with one another, which if you've played with the Miles system or other systems out there, they're a lot of fun. But once you start getting into the big boys like the tanks, it starts to get really fun. I've actually worked with laser tag systems uh, in the British Army and British Army Training Unit Suffield, uh, getting shot at from long distances from enemy engagements as Op 4, Opposition Force. But a lot of people have asked me questions about how it's involved and what is involved when you work with tanks and armored fighting vehicles with this kind of system. And how do you simulate being shot at or shooting at other tanks? And it's really good fun and a lot of you have asked what are those tubes on top of the vehicle are they smoke discharges are they simulations for being shot at or being shot to someone well it's a bit of both actually and today we're going to talk about that and the importance of why this kind of training has to be done because it's not just there for fun and games to make a big loud explosion to make it all look good it actually has tactical sense that really needs to be taken very seriously especially in the context of today's modern battlefield when we're talking about potential tank on tank engagements and peer-to-peer -peer engagements now i've worked with armored fighting vehicles um quite a bit of time in the british army and uh, i'm not a tank crew uh, commander or, or gunner of, of main battle tanks i've worked in infantry fighting vehicles what i can say is when you are going into a scenario with armor and you know you're in laser tag it's pretty nerve-wracking to be honest with you because you're being assessed uh you know it's reality is somewhat sitting in that someone could actually be shooting at you and you're going to get taken out and have to go back to the start point or wherever you get cordoned off to uh, it's not uh, it's not the funnest thing to have in the world happen to you because it's been embarrassing knowing you've just been shot at but everyone's in it together and when it comes to simulation of actually taking on targets or being engaged by targets it's really important during that simulation that you get the real feel of what would happen just pressing a trigger and squeezing it to fire a laser at someone that reacts to some sensor really makes absolutely no sense in the term of real battlefield scenarios because there's a lot of things to consider. And of course, one of those things is when a main gun fires, it actually produces a very big signature to the enemy of where you are, whether it be the tracer round coming from the tank, the shockwave, the smoke, or the blast coming from that projectile. That makes you visible and instantly going to give you return fire. One of the things to consider in a training scenario, though, and why we use simulators as well, is that we're actually able to make that explosion in that sort of scenario, but at the same time, not create fires. Um, live firing, although very, very practical and creates fantastic ability for training, does present a number of opportunities for fires to happen due to the nature of projectiles being very hot when they leave the barrel. The number of times I've had to put fires out in British Army Training Unit Suffield, it's just a massive prairie of grass and the grass fires, is astonishing probably like three or four exercises i've been on during my time that have been completely shut down just due to fires and as i mentioned live firing is really really good you're able to use tracer rounds use the high explosives really get some good training value in there but the laser tag is a cheaper solution to being able to engage targets that may be not actually reactive to a projectile but allow you to have force on force engagements and reduce a lot of risk to training areas because a lot of I guess areas that we train on nowadays aren't actually owned by the militaries that are working there. They're being borrowed, being leased, and there's nothing worse than setting off a forest fire or some form of fire that cannot be controlled by the local force uh, because you've been punching down live rounds all day. Uh, I have to admit, watching this crew using an Abrams to put out a fire is fantastic. Brings back a lot of memories of me having to put a few fires out uh, with the warrior back in the day. But the simulation that is available to tank crews is actually really, really cool. And there's a number of different variants that can happen. The Miles system, which is the laser tag system, is just part of the connectivity of many other systems out there, whether it be via Saab or whoever else. You can see this Abrams driving by here. It doesn't have the full laser tag system on there, but it does have the simulation pyrotechnics located on the left-hand side in that black box there. You'll also notice throughout this footage that the vehicle also has some laser systems plugged above its barrel alongside the coax. This is all integral to that simulation, whether it be, you know, taking on another tank or taking on an infantry lasers all link to one another but when it comes to firing um, or being engaged the system actually will react to that engagement so let's say you're a commander of this vehicle you're getting shot at by another tank from long distance the system has pyrotechnics on the side of the turret there in that black box 
that is kind of like little honeycomb pods that fire out explosive pyrotechnics. That allows the tank crew that's engaging them to see if they've got a hit or not. There are other systems out there that when you shoot someone, all the lasers, or the sort of, I guess, flashes go off, and you see this sort of strobe flashing. Um, I absolutely despise that, because if you're looking through your optics, it's not always super easy to see that strobing. Um, on the top of that, uh, it just makes it super obvious that you're dead, and it's really embarrassing, because you can't turn it off until you get the god gun. At least the pyrotechnics, you get hit, you see that smoke plume, you're like, cool, I'm dead, thanks, I'm done. Um, but it, it's true, the, the box that is on the side of that, uh, on the side of the Abrams, there is this one type of system that's available. Different countries use their own variants. Of course, there is systems like the, and I'm going to try my very, very best to say this in German, the Kanon Abastus Dashtlung Agarat. I'm... I'm trying my best to say that, but the abbreviation to that is the CADAG system, which is simulating the firing of the main gun, uh, which are basically smoke grenade launchers in front of uh, the hull of the turret for the German Leopard 2s and variants out there. And you'll notice on some of the Leopard 2s, you'll see that big pack on top of the turret, like I showed in the beginning of the footage with those big smoke discharges on there. And what they're doing is simulating that main gun being fired. Now, rigging all this stuff up is never a good time. Um, I absolutely despise having to plug all this stuff in. You've got to work with the civilians who are really normally nice people when it comes to this stuff, but they're probably sick to death of working with a bunch of freaking idiots like us who are just not listening to their instructions and putting it on properly. We had a lot of like headaches working with civilians, putting this stuff in the vehicles and sort of retrofitting the vehicles to make it work. Um, especially when you're working with things like pyrotechnics, this stuff can actually kill you if you don't put it on properly. So it's pretty serious stuff. The laser system alone is also very expensive. Uh, if you plug it in the wrong way or hook it up in the wrong way, it's not going to work. I have to admit, on the sort of vehicle platform, it's very accurate. Um, you'd be surprised, actually, how accurate it is. Uh, in the infantry setting or in a dismounted setting, I've used it before as well. Yeah, it's subjective. I mean, it all comes down to how well it's been set up. When you set it up on vehicles, civilians that work you through it normally set it up really well. And that pyrotechnic system is really important. It's set up properly. There's nothing worse than you going into a simulation exercise and somehow it reacts incorrectly and it's just completely compromised your position by popping off honeycomb poppers all over the place saying, oh, you've been shot at when you actually haven't been shot at. Um, the smoke discharges that are standard on, you know, infantry fighting vehicles, main battle tanks, can still obviously be used. Uh, a lot of people get confused with the smoke discharges of tanks being the same thing as the smoke discharges and the laser systems that work for either firing the main gun or being reacted to being engaged, and they're not. Uh, and that's kind of why I made this video, is because there is a little bit of misinformation about the sort of the way in which the systems work. Uh, you look at the honeycomb pack on the side of the turret, you look at the big smoke discharges in front of the barrel, and they're like, oh, they're just extra smoke discharges. No, they're not. Uh, they're designed specifically to create that main gun firing. Because, you know, when you're looking down into, uh, into an objective or into a sort of viewing arc or your arcs of observation, when you're seeing a smoke uh, plume burst open, it's either going to be a number of things. It's going to be an ATGM, some form of infantry fighting vehicle firing its main gun, or a main battle tank firing its main gun. You may be the one being engaged and it may be all over for you, but if not, the rest of your squadron, your troop, whatever it may be in configuration of armor, will see that smoke plume and be able to trace quickly onto that, especially with the heat signature and the various optics we have on main battle tanks today. But if you didn't have that smoke pop, you know, going off and that sound, and of course sound is pretty obvious too, uh, it's going to make it a lot harder to tell if you're actually being shot at. Um, now there are um, beam rider systems out there, you know, laser beam riders that detect whether you're being lased or not that's a totally different subject but again it's not relevant because the reality is uh, yes you would use a laser rangefinder to laser your target before firing the main gun but you still need something that indicates especially to like infantry that are around that could have the ability to fire an ATGM back at them uh, that the gun actually was fired because it's nice to know if the crew of the vehicle that's being engaged or the troop of vehicles that being engaged notices the laser. Uh, but if the infantry doesn't know the actual gun's been fired at their hosting tanks that are supporting them, they can't counteract with their own ATGM. So, you know, there are other systems out there, like the Hoffman system, uh, which is an older platform that's used for, you know, back in the days of the M60s. Actually, they were used on Abrams as well. Uh, I think it's a tube of around about six to eight um, 
pods that are put on top of the main gun of the barrel exactly the same platform you know you fire the gun uh, it initiates that smoke discharge and allows you to actually simulate the gun being fired so this is really important stuff I mean, a lot of people look at this as kind of benign i think it's actually very important and i'd love to see more of it um it does look a little redonkulous seeing a giant pack of smoke discharges over the main barrel uh, and you know being popped all over the place of course the sound cannot be simulated the same of which a main gun actually fires they're very very loud uh the blast alone and the sort of the muzzle blast is huge the shock wave from the gun but it's at least enough to give a good indication that hey you're being shot at you should probably think about looking that way um in Suffield, we never had those kind of systems at the time. We basically just had the strobe systems with the Challenger 2s, the Warriors, etc. Um, but we got by. You know, it worked just as easily with the strobe system. We can still see we've been shot at. But I would like to get one day involved if I could, or at least see, um, you know, an armored battalion or an armored battle group of some kind firing it out with these things because it's really cool watching this footage and seeing them actually shoot off at one another. And I'm kind of curious as to whether or not you would see or hear that extremely well when you are observing your arcs in the main battle tank, and whether or not it's super valid. I mean, I think a number of people I've spoke to in the past have said, you know, it's hokey, as in it doesn't work all the time very well, but when it does, it does give that clear indication that, yeah, you're you're in trouble, you should probably uh, switch, switch over to that target and engage it right away. So... I hope you enjoyed today's video, folks. I wanted to give you a little bit of an understanding of what the system does. Again, referencing that there are two different kinds. The reactive kind of being shot at and the explosions go off telling you you've been engaged. Or you're shooting at someone and it's indicating that the main gun has been fired. Not only giving your position away, which is a sort of a tactical thinking mindset that you have to have. But also allowing the enemy to know that you're actually there. So really, really cool tech. And I would hope to see more of it happening in the future. If you enjoyed today's video and learned a little bit about what's going on with these tanks and these simulators, please leave me a like. And of course, if you want to be notified of any upcoming videos in the future, click that little bell by the subscribe button so you can be notified for next time. Thank you again for joining me. Look at the description box as well for all my different links, whether my Patreon and PayPal. Thank you to those who have been supporting me financially. I can't thank you enough. And I hope to see you on the next video. All the best, folks. Bye-bye.